In this video, we're going to go over something called the Engage Disengage game. This is a nice game that you can do if your dog is reactive to other things, uh, either uh, in a fearful way or an excited way. What we want your puppy to do is learn to watch the other object. Uh, this could be a person, this could be another dog, this could be a bicycle, somebody riding a skateboard, a scooter, um, really anything your puppy is reactive to that you can control. So basically, all we want your puppy to do is to, uh, the, there's two stages this. We want your puppy essentially not to grab the poop bag, uh, but, and we're also going to be using a clicker for this. So if you haven't already primed or loaded your clicker, make sure you watch that video and do that first. One other setup tip. Make sure your puppy has burned a little energy before you do this. They want, you want to be kind of a normal energy zone. If they are really excited, that's not the good time to do it. That could also be an indication you are too close. So you want your puppy to be close enough to whatever the thing is where it is not reactive to it, but not so close, but I mean, not so far away that it doesn't care. I like to do these at human parks. This nice big open space that you can kind of arrange uh, whatever distance. And I like to find parks that have a path. A lot of times we're gonna have, I know Ollie, it's, we're gonna get to you in a second. Um, I like to find parks that have a nice path so that that's where people are gonna be jogging and riding their bicycles and skateboards and whatnot. Now, when you're doing this, your puppy cannot, or your adult dog cannot be reactive. If they're reactive at all, barking, lunging, uh, growling, you're too close. Take several steps away. My two tests are, can I get my dog to easily sit and easily take a treat? If your puppy freezes, their, uh, their mouth goes back, their ears go back, they're hunched over, they're looking away from things, you see a lot of white in their eye, uh, they're freezing, uh, they're breathing heavily or they're not, breath uh, they're not breathing at all, holding their breath. Those are all signs that your sub puppy is uncomfortable and you wanna increase that distance. Okay, Lydia uh, is going to be helping us out. She's going to be walking back and forth. She's not walking towards us. She's working, walking a perpendicular line. Lydia's going to go ahead and start walking. I'm waiting for him to look. As soon as he looks, I click and give a treat. And Lydia's going to stop because he's just staring at her. And go ahead and walk again. Now, I uh, recommend that you actually have your uh, leash uh, make sure the leash is loose, but have your clicker in your leash hand. So that way you can have both of them together and your other hand is free to grab treats. You saw my timing was a little bit slow on the last one. All right, go ahead and walk again, Lydia. You're going to keep repeating this. Go ahead and stop. And it's helpful if you can arrange to have the person, the stimulus, being somebody that's a friend of yours. That way you can control it just like I'm asking Lydia to do. Stop moving the bicycle or whatever it is. All right, what do you say, buddy? Okay, go ahead and walk. Now you're going to keep on practicing this until when the puppy sees the person and uh, you click, well, that was a bad click on my part. Um, the, the, when the puppy look, uh, sees a person and you click, they're looking up at you right away. This might take a couple practice sessions, that's okay. So that's what you should see. When you first start doing this, if your puppy doesn't look up at you, put that treat in their mouth right away. Go ahead and move again, Lydia. So don't wait for your puppy to look up at you, it won't know at first. Stop. Okay, go ahead and start again. So you see how quickly he's looking at me? You're not gonna to go to the second stage until you can have the, the person move five times so your puppy, as soon as you click, looks away right up at you very easily. And when you do this, you're uh, not only when you can achieve it at this side, there you go, buddy, sit. You're gonna do this from all sorts of different angles around the stimulus. So on this side of the trail, that side of the trail, in front of it to the side, and keep on changing around, but make sure you're keeping the same distance. Also another note, if you're, uh, right now Lydia's under, uh, I was gonna say under my control, but Lydia's cooperating with me. Um, if you're doing this with people just in the lot, you don't know, or in, in public, you don't know what they're gonna be like. A dog might walk by, and your puppy might be comfortable with, another dog might walk by all crazy, Barky, well, your puppy probably is going to be more reactive. So you might need to adjust the distance yourself by moving a little further away. So the first stage, keep practicing this until, go ahead and walk again, Lydia. Your puppy is looking up at you just like that as soon as uh, you make the clicking sound. Now, uh, when we're doing this, I usually like to do this with a harness. Now, when it comes to harnesses, we really are, are recommend, we always recommend that your uh, harness is a Y shape 
or an X shape. It should never be a T shape, which you mean a bar going straight across. That can actually mess with their gait and it makes it a little bit more uncomfortable for the puppy. You can cause some damage, especially your puppy, if you're using that sort of harness on a regular basis. Also, uh, watch for any puppies that might freeze or shut down. Sometimes a puppy, if they suddenly just stop taking the treat or they freeze, uh, then that might be an indication that you push too far. You want to keep these pretty short and successful and positive, and you always want to end on a positive note. You're going to keep practicing. Go ahead until the puppy is looking and looking up at you right away and does that five times in a row from all the different angles. All right, for stage two, this is what we call the disengage part. And again, remember, don't move to stage two until you get that five steps in a row like we talked about previously. Sit. So now we want the puppy, go ahead and Lydia's gonna go ahead and walk. One, two, three, four, five. So we want the puppy to look away from the person automatically. Now we're practicing this all in one shot, so this is something that's probably gonna take you multiple practice sessions to get to, that's okay. Remember, the end result is what we're looking for, not to do it with any sort of speed. Sit. Go ahead and walk again, Lydia. One, two, very good. One, two, three, four, Wow, I shouldn't have doubted Ollie. All right, go ahead. One, two, three, four, five. Good job, Lydia. So if you have to, you can make a kissing sound, but that's probably an indication you need to back up to the previous level. If you do this right, when they hear that click, they should just turn and look up at you. Um, and after a while, what we're doing is we're conditioning the dog to actually see something and to turn and look away voluntarily. That is the goal of the second stage. So uh, if your puppy has difficulty at any point, don't, don't be afraid to increase distance uh, or to uh, back up and go to the first stage and practice that one a little bit more. Ali, and also make sure you keep your leash nice and loose. Go ahead again, Lydia. Very good, Ollie. All right, go ahead and do it again. Keep going. That's about at five. Let's wait until it gets done chewing. Okay, go ahead. So Ollie, this is very advanced. You probably are not gonna see this uh, when you're doing this with your puppy, and that's okay. Uh, but that's the idea is we want your puppy now to start disengaging. Just like the first stage, once we've gotten to the point where our puppy is disengaging within five seconds and looking up at us, then we wanna start practicing this from di uh, different angles until you've gone all the way around keeping the same distance for all of those. Once you can do that, then you're able to vary it. And there's two ways to vary this up. You can have your, uh, your stimulus start moving faster and you're still at the same distance and working up until eventually to a jogging or to a cycling motion or whatever is a normal rate of pace. Then once your puppy is disengaging from that, then you take one step closer and you repeat the whole process of stage two. And if your puppy at any time has difficulty, don't ever be afraid to back up to stage one. Always end on a positive note so your puppy actually enjoys the exercise. If you get frustrated, your puppy gets frustrated, that's the time, uh, if you can, get a good one in. Uh, but if you can't, just ask for your puppy for a sit or anything that's easy, click for that, go ahead and reward them. All right, now when you're doing this, I would recommend that you do this in shorter bursts. Maybe maximum I would probably do would be about five minutes, but it depends on how well your puppy is doing. If your puppy only is good for a minute, that's fine. Just do a bunch of one minute sessions. Then afterwards, go for a little bit of a walk. Let your puppy sniff around, play a little bit with your puppy. Following up a training exercise with something fun is a good way to motivate your puppy to want to do it again because they remember, hey, we did something fun after we played this engage disengage game, which got me a lot of treats. Well, this is my buddy Ollie, and this is how you can play the engage disengage game. Quest, you are a goofball.